Welcome back to Kara Cup number two. Here's another game from round one. It's going to be Descara versus Rampa Frolic. And uh, this is going to be pretty painful, I would assume. Descara, of course, one of the best players in the game. Um, certainly up there, for, you know, contending for the number one slot as the best coalition player in the game. Uh, really prolific pr player. Has been, ra been around since the early days. Even contests for A-game inks, which is, you know, saying something. And Rampa Frolic, meanwhile, definitely a pretty good player, but... Uh, probably just gonna be finding himself out of his league here. He's gonna be playing as the Gelsian on the... Sh you know, I don't I don't need to ruin this game here, of course, like... You, you can still root for Rampa Frolic. I love rooting for the underdog, but... I really would expect that, um, Garmelator's... No, that Descara is gonna take this. Anyhow, spawning down in the south with his blue and blue coalition forces, it is Descara. And spawning up in the north, probably quite afraid at the moment, it is Rampa Frolic. It's kind of purple and blue Galzian forces, which I think looks super cool on movies. Especially in the nighttime. Oh. This game's got excellent visuals. Gonna be throwing down a scanner right here. He might be salvaging this base runner. No, he's keeping it. Um He seems to be going for more of a more of an economic build right now. Well no, he's already researched sand scanner fabrication, so maybe he wants to go out in the early game and do some damage. Um Descara, meanwhile going support cruiser first. Uh, very difficult to punish this against coalition players in the current meta. They can throw down a turret with their base runner. They make LAVs faster than you, so he's definitely going to get away with this, if you ask me. Um, Rumpa Frolic, meanwhile, does seem to want to move out into the middle of the map, which is why I thought it was a little interesting to put the scanner down here. This is a very dis defensive scanner, you know? It's going to have vision over, like, this area and see if there's a counterattack coming, but not really going to be able to be used in the offense, so I think that's a little interesting. Um, let's see, so Descartes' support cruiser is out, and he's going to be moving on to a second base immediately. Researching LAV fabrication. Um, just looks like a very standard opening from him. There's now three sand skimmers out on the field here, the fourth being produced. Rampa Frolic seems to want to move out into the middle, uh, move into his opponent's base, maybe try to do some damage, but this turret is almost ready on this base runner. So that will be very difficult. Actually, Discara not even scouting with a probe like he normally does. Oh wait, yeah, as I say that he launches the probe, right? Well, there you go. He's scouting with the probe. Discara's very good with probe scouting, by the way. I won't really be able to focus on that too much during this game, I wouldn't expect, but you'll see. He will see everything and he will, like, almost rare, uh, almost never take any damage on this probe. I say as it gets shot down by the production cruiser, but... <laughs> it's the first, it's the first round in the tournament. He's, he's warming up, you know what I mean? A lot of sand scammers pushing in here now. Actually, this... That, that looks pretty convincing to me, but uh, there's a support cruiser here, so this is like the only target he can really attack and expect to get any damage done on it. Discara definitely with the defender's advantage here, and he's going to lay down a turret, so that should seal the deal. No aggression going to be on this first base here in the early game. Although that is, you know, a little expensive for Discara putting down a turret, so uh, Rumpa Frolic can kind of say, okay, I've done a little bit of economic damage at at least here. I've ensured that the turret is not going to be in the middle, taking control of the field, and he's had to put it down, so. Now some LAVs getting produced from Descara. Using their range advantage. Uh, those those sand skimmers visibly shook their heads no, did you see that? They were like, no, we're not chasing you in there. Um, <laughs> which which is correct, that's not where you want to be. I like how Rampa Frolic has split his forces here. He's got, you know, 3-3-3, three, 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 and these three are actually coming in for Looking to be a bit of a fruitful backstab, might even get, you know, a salvager kill here if he's lucky. Um, these three tests are the wrong place, so this turret is going to just chew them up. Oh, he makes it out, just barely. This guy could have chased there with the LAV, maybe gotten a kill off of that, but that is alright. These salvagers being pulled off of the line, because these sand skimmers are in here, but it uh, looks like this guy is going to be able to hold this off no problem. He's actually gotten power reserve 1, which is common to see when people are on the defense, and so there's no way the Rob Frog is going to be able to push in just yet. He is going to get an artifact out, I really like that, getting artifacts on the back of this pressure, and in fact he's got a second one on the way. So, looking still, you know, pretty decent for Rompa Frolic, he's really holding his own against Discar here, keeping him pin, uh, pinned in to his base, not gonna, you know, get cheesed out of this game or anything like that. Sandskimmers here using the base runner healing are gonna want to try to take a fight with these LAVs, but that's not gonna work. Um, and indeed this guy should really pull back, ooh. Ah, he could still... Oh, wow. Um, yeah, Discar must have had his attention elsewhere. He definitely could have picked off this, this sand skimmer right here. Kind of a foolhardy push right there, but 
Um, still no salvagers lost. Still a very good hold from Discara. Now there's two AAVs out on the field. He's going to want to do some early game pressure with this. Rumpfrolic has already gotten a assault railgun, which is excellent. This is exactly what you need. In fact, he's already gotten he's already gotten railgun armor level one. So definitely the right response here. You know, he kind of expected an AAVs were going to be coming out, and he's ready for them now. Well, there's another turret right here. That's going to clean up. Looks like one sandskimmer at least. The sandskimmers are running in here desperately for this turret, but that's not good at all. They're not even going to be able to kill this thing, I wouldn't think, because Discara, of course. Kind of a god with his smoke micro, there's no way you're ever going to get that. Now the assault railgun's being hung out to dry and he's going to go down. Suddenly things start looking pretty pretty dangerous for Rumpa Frolic here. And indeed there are already railguns on the field, so he's going to need an answer to this very quickly. And uh, if you ask me five sand skimmers on the assault railgun does not cut it. What's he producing here? Nothing at the moment. Or it looks like more sand skimmer. Ah uh, no, he's making an assault railgun. Um, but Discara on two bases, Rumpa Frolic still on one, Discara with carrier production upgraded, Rumpa Frolic just on one production cruiser. And in fact, it's noteworthy that the uh, coalition carrier will make things like LAVs, for example, faster actually than one production cruiser, so that's like doubly bad for him. He is producing a second one, but without that two base economy, it's going to be difficult for him to maintain double production cruiser production. These two railguns here, not really out of position. Um, Sandskimmers went in for a little poke, but they weren't able to find anything. Now, two artifacts have been extracted from Rumpa Frolic, so he has got a little bit of an advantage, of course. He could maybe go for uh, refinery mode, pull his production cruiser back, and try to use his carrier, actually, as like a fighting force in this game. But that's going to be difficult. Oh, very nearly got one LAV. I'd love to see him just push out there and get that one, but there are AAVs in the hood, so maybe it was wise for him to back away like he did. Now, there's three assault railguns here, three railguns, and then much larger, actually four railguns, and a much larger supporting army for Discara. This is looking pretty dangerous, and I, I doubt this base runner is going to extract, but even beyond that, you know, if this snowballs at all... Oh, don't worry, he's got the, uh, he's got the healing ability, he's fine. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> actually one thing to note here, Discara can move this LAV up here and get the healing off of the base runner, because he heals your opponent too, so that's usually not a good idea. Anyhow, um, there's a real danger here that this could snowball out of control for Discara. You know, if he kills off these three assault railguns, for example, suddenly he's going to push these production cruisers back into the base, and then it's just going to be game over right there. So, this fight here is going to be crucial for Romper Frolic, and already he's taken a lot of damage in this assault railgun. Sandskimmers have found a good angle to kill these LAVs, but they're going to be suppressed by the AAVs. Actually makes that look really convincing. I heard the turret firing, it looks like there was some kind of counterattack going on, but it didn't really get anywhere. But that was a very, very convincing fight, actually, by Romper Frolic. Um, actually just lost another Assault Rail again, you know, it's small gains, but small gains make a big difference with time. He's actually using his opponent's smoke to get right up there on the railguns. This is beautiful. Um, Focus Fire is not really coming in, but he is going to be able to clean up a lot of these railguns. Oh, but Descara with his smoke micro, of course. Gonna save that one pretty clutch, although he runs out of the smoke. Very ungrateful to his... Oh no, no, he didn't kill it! He didn't kill it, so that railgun is still alive. But that was a very efficient trade there from Rapa Frolic. He still has he still has the sand skimmers like set to attack this one, it's a bit unfortunate, but okay, he's remedied that just now. Rampa Frolic really making this look a lot more even than I thought it was going to be. Um I'd still say he's behind here. Oh wow, you look at the units lost, he's very behind, but uh he's got quite an army presence up here by by um Descar's base doing good damage and he's definitely stopping any kind of push from Descara except for with this base runner because you know turrets and all but anyway <laughs> this one LAV thinks he's a hero he's gonna get in there and get absolutely killed this base runner thinks he's holding an artifact but that's also not true uh, so that's pretty funny there's a lot of AAVs a lot of railguns for Descara here he seems to have kind of transitioned away from LAVs so as I say that he's building some more um, and where are these two guys headed? This is kind of curious. I think, you know, Rumpa Frolic is really playing for the artifacts here. Thinking, well, if I can get some good pressure on my opponent, make him take some unfavorable trades with the artifacts, I could I could maybe grind out a win here. But Descara being very good at denying that. You see he's got just two LAVs up here. He's got turrets being placed down over on that side. And his army also is just very, very powerful, holding off this choke point here. And so there's really no way into the extraction zone. 
And now, like I was saying, you know, this could snowball, right? He's killed off these LAVs, or these uh, sand skimmers. Um, he's killed off these whole railguns. Now it looks like he's even going to get a production cruiser. So this is starting to look pretty pretty hairy for Rumpel Frolic. And I would assume that the Scar is just going to push his advantage and just win right here. One production cruiser goes down, that's a huge loss. We look at the units lost to have, it's completely incongruous here. And Descara, once again making it look easy, kills another base run here, but actually not before it extracts, so... There's quite a lot of power in uh, Rompa Frolic's carrier. And he's gonna push that in, although with only one power and speed, but that's alright. Hey, refinery mode. Anyway, <laughs> um... This is gonna be a miracle if Rob Frolic can hold from here. Another assault railgun goes down there, base runner died in the middle. And now even uh, Descara on the back of this beginning to pull out some artifacts. These railguns here, they represent a significant force, but they're gonna respect that carrier. AAVs throw down the smoke, uh, allowing these units to retreat. On this, this hero AAV, I may be about to die, but at least I can save my friends. What a, what a hero. What a hero. Making the scoreline 1 3 now is Descara. Uh, and Rumpa Frolic seems to have held off this push. So that, that's pretty good. Uh, it doesn't look like Descara is going to be able to push in there anytime soon, but he may be able to go for a backstab on these um, salvagers over here, which are a bit less defend you. Meanwhile, look at this you know, this turret placement here holding off this artifact and also stopping any, like, uh, just little counterattacks by sand skimmers, which is. I think a really nice touch. These LVs here are gonna find this base runner. Oh, he's not even gonna pick. Oh, pick up the artifact. At least do that. Oh no, he goes down. You know, you can pick up the artifacts with those base runners just to make sure that your opponent can't pick it up. Because right now there's none of them that spawn except for that one. That would have been a nice little touch, but I don't think it's really gonna matter too much. Still though, little things make a big difference. And now these LVs, like I said, they're gonna go in for a backstab here. Cheeky little scanners placed down there, but uh, that's going to be taken out. And now Rump Frolic's carrier kind of seeing that he can't do quite as much as he expected. Um, he has research power reserve 1, I think that's good. It's going to allow him to put 1 power in healing as well as in range and damage. Uh, but these salvagers getting pushed off the line here by these LAVs. There's only 4 sand scanners here, he's not going to be able to hold them. Maybe some time before he's able to get this base up again. And meanwhile, there's two AAVs over on this side getting ready to push in right here. Um, I say as they get tasked to go back there. I think I think he's going back because of the base runner. Maybe he just like yeah, control select and selected all of them. But still, you know, it's really impressive how Descara keeps pressure in on these flanks here. You know, like you're never you're never safe when you're playing against Descara. Base runner AA not going to do too much, is it? In fact, wow, I didn't know that. So apparently the base runner's healing effect heals air units too. So note to self, do not use that when air units are attacking your, your base runners. I didn't know that, that's actually interesting. Um, this base runner never going to be able to extract. The carrier is trying to get involved again here, but uh, there's enough railguns to really, you know, uh, actually get a carrier kill here, so Malproduct is going to have to pull back with that. And the strike fighters in the air, because of course it's Scara, he always goes for air. Um, they're making good work of these uh, railguns and such. They are all falling. This carrier now kind of wondering what it wants to do from here. He's researching missile ships, I think that's good. But it's going to be really difficult for him to hold on to this game much longer. Pretty soon Descara will just get up to that critical mass where he has enough railguns that he can just kill the carrier and like where is it going to retreat to. And look, more turrets being put down by these base runners. This you know, Descara knows the only way he could conceivably lose this is if maybe my opponent somehow extracts more artifacts, so he's just going to play it safe, puts turrets down on all of them except for this one, and so even if Descara, or even if Rob Frolic does find an avenue to get those artifacts out, it's going to be very, very slow. He's going to have to do it just from this one space. Descara really does not want that scanner out anymore, so he's going to kill that. Probably misclick there. Um, the Railguns have found some high ground and they're doing a lot of damage to this carrier. Down to about, you know, three-fourths health right now. He's going to have to pull back. Actually, these sand skimmers found a bit of an opening to these railguns. Let's... Oh, no, you could have pushed in there. I don't know. May maybe it's actually wise because they could have gotten kind of sandwiched by these AAVs. But I think he could have pushed in there. 
Um, actually, pretty decent missile barrage hits a lot of these LAVs, but another production crew may go down. These, the, I missed these, but they were a flank over on this side and then came out here. Uh, you know, if it were me, I would have actually stuck around to take out this production cruiser and actually traded that for all these LAVs, but, um, Descara is better than me, so I don't know if you want to listen to that. He is finding a good angle on this production cruiser here, pushing it back. All of Rampa Frolic's force is now, you know, kind of contracted in this little ball right here. He can't move out anywhere else. Look at the number of strike fighters here. And of course, there's a lot of anti-air, but, man, that is looking really scary. Karen's taking a lot of damage to railguns right here. I think he's just trying to charge them down, but that's never going to work. And indeed, uh, Descara, even getting his carrier involved, he's reached Search Power Reserve 3, he's gotten out to our effect as well, so... That's a force to be reckoned with. The Strike Fighters come in, and they're just going to secure the kill here. Um, they're going to take heavy losses of these missile ships, but I think it will not be enough. I think this is Descara closing out this game right here. Now, now's a good time to use the heal ability. No, the carry does go down. And that is going to be game to Discara. Not nearly as one-sided as I thought it was going to be. You know, I mean, I was saying, like, yeah, Discara is like this god, and, you know, Rump Frolic is like a mere mortal. He's going to just get wrecked. Actually, he made it look... He made it look pretty good. I'd love to check the stats here real quick. Um, you know, he was, he was behind the whole time, I think, but not by so much. Uh, definitely, you know, put on a good show here. I think he's... He's looking better than he did last turn, and I'll put it that way. But not enough to beat Descara, so he's going to lose this game. And we will see him, I assume, in the next round. Until then.